Hi, welcome to Heavy's Guide to Passing. I'm a coach here at PsychArt, and uh, this is a guide that I use to help my uh, students work on racecraft and, and uh, getting through traffic. And we're going to have a look through this guide. We'll talk about some concepts that are, that are used uh, on the different uh, turns here at PsychArt, and we'll look at some videos of this stuff in practice. The first thing I like to show people is how two carts can be traveling at exactly the same speed and yet when they come into a corner one of them ends up in front of the other. Typically this is where all the passing happens on, on corners. It's not really about being faster than the other driver although that happens quite often where you're a lot faster than the other driver but what these, um, these two circles show us is that two carts running at exactly the same speed on traveling the exact same arc one cart can end up in front of the other in respect to the corner now this is uh, the basic concept behind all passing um, and all types there are different types of passes where you come out you enter a turn inside somebody or you exit a turn inside somebody or on the outside you'll end up at different positions on the track and these these positions uh, give you a positional advantage of what we call uh, the preferred line um, over the other cart so in this case say where the cart's coming on the inside it it's able to get to the apex and stop this other cart from from getting there first so the things the key thing to note about these arcs is that imagine we have traveled in on straight lines before we've started our turn and the red cart here is slightly offset to the right of the black cart imagine these two are right behind each other the red cart now turns into the turn begins its turn in like a full cart length before the, the black cart does as it does this we watch the front right corner of the the passing cart in respect to the lead cart note that the second rectangles here and there's a point at which the front right corner and the back left corner are almost touching at this point we're, we're in the clear and the red cart can just run a straight line down the inside or continue on its arc can continue on its arc and it's going to end up at the apex before the black cart can get there so that's the, the two cr critical things here. You'll notice up here on these, this, this image where the red rectangle is slightly offset to the right of the first black rectangle. And as we move to the next stage, the red rectangle starts to come across the back side of the lead rectangle. See the, the relationship between these two. As we get to the next stage, the red rectangle is now inside the black rectangle and this continues until we're side by side. At this point, the um, and even this point, which is pretty much the same thing, this red cart could opt to just travel in a straight line and get a nice wide apex to, and all the while blocking the lead cart. So this is the basic concept that we're going to be looking at and how we can execute this and you'll be seeing this theme repeated over and over again in different types of passing where we set up an offset and then we move ourselves into a gap that gets opened up as the cart sets up for the turn. So let's take a look at the turn one pass. This uh, little picture here shows the, this is a, a map of the front straight and this is turn one, the left hander, this is where the steel plate and all that is and uh, and then we go right here off into turn two. The uh, black rectangles here represent the standard line, the cart, a cart on the standard line and the purple rectangles here represent that cart under brakes. So this is a standard cart coming in breaking the, to turn and rotate for turn one. The green rectangles represent the passing cart and the line that it has to take in order to get inside this, this gap here and the red rectangles represent that cart under straight line brakes note that the uh, purple cart brakes before the red uh, the, the passing cart so these red rectangles are, are further up as we come into the turn 
the green card has set up has created the offset right here and begun its turn in earlier as we make our way down this line we're watching the front right bumper of the green cart. The green cart is watching this front right bumper and in respect to the back left bumper of the lead cart and they're, they're looking for this gap between the wall and the cart to open up. That's when they can run straight down the inside. You'll note that at this stage the black cart and the wall are really close. There's no way you're going to get inside of that. Yet as we we get into this space, as this space opens up we're able to run straight along and break late in front of the line of the lead cart. So that's the, the general way in which the turn one pass works on a, a decreasing radius turn. And we'll be looking at this more in a sec. We'll have a look at some videos of, of this in execution um, and how it works. So now from this position I'm going to pass them in turn one. So I offset to the right as I follow them and I'm going to wait till as we get about here and I'm going to turn in early start crossing over early and now I'm watching his bumper here in my front right and I'm trying to match them line them up so I get into this situation as this gap opens and now I can just run down the inside he's trying to come over but I just run straight here and then turn in late. See his card is still hanging on the outside edge but I have preferred line so I come in just enough and I run overshoot it a bit over this way to push the front of his card over here and uh, now he's, he has nowhere to go, he either goes into that wall but uh, or gets in behind me which he'll, he'll do and now I keep it fairly tight, I don't want to come over because if I delay my entry there's a high chance that he's going to come up the inside and T-bow me. So I keep it really tight here. And uh, I'm pretty much set from here. I have preferred line into the next turn. So, uh, and he's, he's behind me anyway. So, <coughs> if we go back a bit, have a look at that again. Set up for it. This works with, with very fast drivers as well. That's just a classic pass uh, from the front straight into turn one with between two drivers that are pretty much travelling at the same speed. The inside, on the outside, bit of a gap, and we turn down and line up the front corners and make use of this, this gap that opens up. get on the brakes kind of late probably breaking about here sort of straight and control the turn okay the second most popular pass at Sycart is the crossover pass um, this pass comes up most often in turn seven uh, that's the turn as you come up through the back straight and you go through the sweeper um, there'll be a left hander and then there's this right hander if you can imagine that um, the left hander is six and then seven we'll, we'll be having a look at that some more in the video in this case um, the black cart here we're traveling from the bottom of the page to the top the black cart hits an early apex and shoots themselves wide while the red cart comes in with a wider apex and turns himself down and gets on the inside and underneath the the other cart and there's different ways to make this happen but usually people do this to themselves somewhat and uh, it's very common for a slower driver to come out of turn six and shoot themselves wide to the wall for whatever reason um, usually they've apexed early and shot themselves wide and this is your chance to get over here get wide create this big space between you and then close down and get into this gap here that opens up on the exit. So let's have a look at some video at, um, at how that plays out. And you'll notice again we're traveling exact same arcs, uh, but you just end up 
way on the inside of the other cart as you come down onto the, the other turn. So theoretically you could be travelling at exactly the same speed and still pull this off. There we go. Here we go. Alright. Let's have a look at some passing. Now these guys were fairly slow. Um, we can see here we're approaching turn 6. Uh, we've got a driver that's uh, running pretty much mid-track and we can expect uh, we can expect them to overshoot turn six so let's have a look so the first thing you want to do here is you go a little bit wider than normal you see here, here's a standard oil patch and usually I'm over here and you can see how tight this guy is as we're coming in with it okay he's going to early apex he's going to botch this turn so we go a bit deeper than usual with the intention of getting over here close to the apex now you can see how far off the apex I am actually. Well we see he's parked it on the exit, very common in this turn. And now we've run over here, well I don't have much hope of, of holding the outside here but if he's going to repeat this this pattern he's going to park it over here. So I run way deep, look at the big gap I allow here and I turn with the intention of getting in here just as this gap opens there it is there and there's a the gap now keep in mind uh, I'm running at 270 pounds so I'm I'm not running that light at all um, and now we can just run down the inside we have preferred line coming into the next turn okay here's another look at the uh, crossover pass coming into the the last turn um, okay we've got very late early apexes very wide on the exits probably expect that to happen again over here so let's see we come wide they've turned in slowly and they're parking it on the exit. This is because this driver is not lifting. They're not trying to control their speed and their balance for this turn. So they're just trying to they're using way too much gas and they're pretty light which causes them to just sail out on the exit. It's very very common with new drivers. And now that I'm there I have to be careful with this driver because they're very small and they're light so, and I'm at 270 pounds they're going to get a run on me you can see here I'm, I'm in front of their cart but you can see they were about to take off so I make the outside of my cart touch the outside of their cart and if there is any accelerated momentum if they have any speed advantage because they're light it takes it away it actually gives it to me and you can see we're having a bit of a drag race and they're able to get the upper hand of me. Now I'm not pinching them in the wall on the outside, I'm just making the, the pods touch each other. And now I have controlled line. There's not much they can do. Okay, the sweeper pass. Let's take a look at this one. This is my favourite pass, but you don't get a chance to pull it off very often because it's kind of hard to do. This black line is your standard uh, driving line, cut on the, the standard sort of line, and they have to um, Actually, in this case, we've, we've apexed up here um, early, actually. Uh, but they've come. You've got to get wide for turn six. This is a sweeper coming to six, and this here is seven. They've got to get wide um, and set up for the the entry. Uh, so what we try to do is we run slightly deeper, and we get ourselves slightly higher off the wall at like the pole. Um, which allows us to come down and hit this a super late apex and normally you'd be apexing about here and we try to apex later and get on this tight arc and come down on the inside line. Let's have a look how, uh, how that plays out. Okay here's an interesting pass. So I'm traveling at my usual pace and I notice a driver up front going pretty slow mid-track through the sweeper. You can see I'm closing him fast. Well, at this point, what you don't want to do 
is just sort of follow them because you're going to run into them. They're, too, they're going too slow. So you come out wider. Like you can see I, I start making some adjustments to get myself out here. Now normally we want to be over here. This is our fast line. This left wheel is going to be crossing on that paint there. If we can't do that. We're just going to run straight into them. So we lengthen our line, get ourselves out over here. And now we start aiming to get inside the gap that's going to be created by this driver as they get to about this point. So we come down, we're aiming, we're like open up, open up, and there it is. They open up, and there we are. Like Again, we're lining up this the front left bumper with their back right bumper, anticipating that they're going to open this gap for us. And now, because they're going so slow and we're going so fast, we just run down the inside here. I've pretty much got them. Now the thing is, when you're in a situation like this, sometimes they're running a bit faster, it's not so important that you make this apex. It's more important that you just control the turn. So what I'll do is I'll run a little bit deeper, usually, and I've early apex and I'm shooting myself kind of wide. Way wide. It's a terribly wide line. Uh, but that was, that was just... Uh, to control that line and make sure they don't get around me or, or my hold it. If they do get under me over here, it's, it's okay. I can block right here. If I if they're going to race me, I just park the brakes here. And uh, that's an inside pass out of the sweeper into turn six and seven. So the thing to be wary of when you get yourself into this situation is that uh, you want to be there's two lines you could take here um, if you're up against a more experienced driver they're going to r run a little bit wider as you make this pass and they're going to get a bit of a run out of turn six and you're going to see them appearing on your left hand side now they're going to have two options they can either travel really wide and stay way over to the left in which case they're a threat to a cross under on the next turn as you make your right hand turn they're going to come in underneath you or they can continue to to get on the outside of you and just push you right into the plastic here and pinch you off in the wall either way your immediate response as you see them coming down the inside uh, coming down your left side is to keep turning left and get yourself as far possible to the left as you can uh, and make sure that you stay outside of them uh, and there's no way then for them to get a, a run um, into turn seven ahead on the right hander and to get underneath you. You just make sure you're outwards uh, to walk more to the left. And also turning out to the left will stop them being able to pinch you down under the plastic here. Now normally, um, if you're up against, uh, say, a newer driver, their tendency is going to be to sort of just point their cart at yours so they're going to kind of fall in behind you and start pointing their cart wherever you are um, now the problem with that is if you now come all the way over to the left they the tendency of, of the uh, newer driver is to just point at you and they'll, what they'll end up doing is t-boning you as you're trying to make your right hander so if you see no threat on the left then your threat is going to kind of come from the right so what you want to do is stay to the right and come off the wall as little as possible so that if they are following you and if they do run down the inside wall and try to t-bone you which is a high risk especially if you're up against a driver that's very light and you're very heavy like in this case I'm 265 pounds uh, weighed up with bars and the driver that I'm passing is about, oh jeez, I don't know, I think they were a little driver. Um, so they have a very quick straight line speed. So because of that, we run closer to the, the edge uh, of the track, uh, the uh, closer to the right wall, and we only come off a little bit when we make the right hand turn. So let's have a, another look at that. Well, that's the uh, basic guideline to passing. We looked at the the arcs and uh, how we can have two arcs of exactly the same uh, radius and uh, how two carts traveling exactly the same speed or even at different speeds, 
how the cart behind gets itself into position to take advantage of the line over another one. Um, I'm going to finish out with some just some some clips from from different passes. Okay, we're going to take a look at some passes. Uh, starting here uh, after a red flag, everyone's having to go again, and I had to pull over and let the Daniel buy. So I've taken off, this guy's parked, we get around him and this cheeky little bugger here cuts down the inside, takes a lead. I'm like, oh, what? Okay. So, they're just parking it all over the place. And here we have him. But he's so slow I hit him. I'm like, oh God, how am I going to get around this guy? And there it is there. So... <coughs> <coughs> I'm from way back here. This is crazy. This guy must be so slow. But the thinking here is, even though they're tight here and there's not enough room, most drivers are going to open up about here enough room for you to get under them. So what you try to do is line up your outside right with their inside left on the rear and you aim to get right here into this situation. Once you're here you can shoot forward. Now he's turning down but we have enough speed that we can get to the apex before him. Once we're in this position we pretty much from about here we own the turn. He can turn down, he can do whatever he wants we just go straight, a little bit straighter and we don't have to be right on the apex for this we just have to control the turn so I'm going a little bit deeper to make sure that he doesn't try to run up and get inside here alright let's chase this guy down oh he's way off the apex here so we're going to get way wide we're getting ourselves right over here on the wall so that when he comes through here and parks it on the exit like he surely will now again as he comes here as he exits off this apex he's going to open a gap for us you see it right there opening up and we drive in right underneath him so as he heads out we come in under and steal the turn and a little bit of a jolt Let's have a look how we handle the next driver. Same sort of thinking. The driver's off the wall a bit. They're probably going to overshoot the apex. And we'll get over wide and see if it happens. I have to watch the guy coming up from behind me. Um, they can sometimes I just run down and T-bone you. So I'm hoping they're going to be polite and allow me some entry. Well, it didn't work too well. The guy slid out parked it on the apex because he's worried about hitting the guy in front of him which has caused me to hit him bomb okay I'm screwed I might have avoided it I'm not sure what happened here so I've lost momentum and I've gone wide now they're sitting way over here in the middle of the track not even the middle I mean they're totally gonna choke this next turn so we get nice and wide here we've got an offset of the carts not just the gap, but I'm to the right. I'm intending to come down on the inside. Let's see if it works. Sure enough, they've shot wide and I just drive down the inside and meet the front of my cart meets there slightly, but I'm trying not to slam into this guy. And now that I'm in this position, I need to open some room. So I have to drive a little bit more straight, sort of open this gap here. I have to open that up. So I'm going to drive my wheel, this wheel, I'm going to aim sort of at, get my left wheel into that number one plate. Let's see what happens. See how I'm pushing him out and my left wheel's in that number one plate in the middle of him. And I've just sort of opened it up to, um, to take control of that turn. Let's see how this last driver goes. Same sort of thinking. I'm hoping that they're going to park it over here. So I've come wide to set up for a run to see if I can get inside and I 
a little bit of instability myself so I've given him a, a push and I'll have to do it on the next turn so here I come out wide and I'm aiming to get a very late apex and let's see if I can pull it off and I'm hoping that they oh my goodness they're too tight they're too tight so I've aborted and I've gone wide and now I'm going to do the old crossover no look oh, somebody's pushed in on me oh dear all right ah but ah no I don't have the, the weight okay so now I'm, I'm going to try a pinch down I leave him over here nice and tight I get out wide and they're so slow I'm just going to run a, around them and so that worked that's an unusual situation usually they'll dive in on you okay let's take a look at some passing here back it up a little bit okay we got this is a pretty unusual situation we're heading at, at our usual pace and this guy has come over and totally parked it on the outside wall and he's really tight to the apex so we're going to get over and just see what we can get away with here we're looking to get into this gap as it opens up and it looks like we got just enough he's running very slow <coughs> so I just want to say all of this is um, kind of a gift the guy kind of gave it to me uh, by running so wide and choking this exit and allowing me to get up some momentum so that I could run through and, and get a run on him under here. But he also stayed right out in the middle of the track and left this, this gap open on that apex. So it's not a very common thing that you can capitalize on. It's really his mistake. So we're running at 270. Here's a, a newer looking driver running way wide in the sweeper, sliding around completely mid-track. Actually, it's pretty damn wide. Uh, so we're running our usual line, fairly tight. What are we going to do about this person? I don't think we're going to be able to get inside of them. They're sliding around there. Okay, so we go wide. We get over to the right-hand side of them, and we're anticipating that they're going to do their usual, come what they just did in the last turn, sort of run mid-track and, and end up over here parked where this guy is. So we come out wide and set up for a nice tight apex and you can see we're pretty much almost already already inside of them as they've spun out sideways they're parked and then we're carrying momentum problem is we can't do a lot because they have preferred lines so we have to pull out over here and we put our cart out over here and we let them we create this big gap inside we let them run to the apex and they're going to run ultra tight but they're going to open this gap now and we're going to have a momentum well they they slide a bit and park it again but that lets us just get inside of them here and now we have preferred line over to the next turn now this driver is kind of parking it on the exit and running mid-track so they sort of parked it and they're dead center and uh... <coughs> <coughs> it's giving me a chance here to run down the outside which is a pretty risky business most drivers if they see you over here on the outside will t spin their head and their cart will go where their head looks where their eyes look but I was able to hold the outside here so I'm thinking well maybe I can run the outside we'll see what happens but this driver just sort of trundles along and keeps it super tight well We've got kind of a pinch down situation here, so we come out wide, he's so tight, he should be out where I am, and there's nowhere he can go there except to spin, but he gets on the brakes and does something and just parks it there and I tap him, but now he's super tight on the right hander, so I do the usual, we come out wide and we're going to try and get underneath him, now I'm a little bit close, I didn't create enough of a gap, but and I clip the wall here and clip him but that's where we need to be we've squeezed in the inside it was a super tight one 
This guy's so slow though. He is super rotating here off the apex. Make sure he's really trying to keep his car up mid track. These are so hard to get get inside of and, and to to pull this off. But uh, he has to open up right there. It's super tight, but he's going to keep rotating, and he gives us enough room. And that's all we need. We have the momentum. <coughs> I've actually pushed some momentum into him, and he's accelerating. But we've got preferred line to the apex. Okay, here's one of those really tough and annoying drivers that run mid-track or really tight and choke and slide all over the place. So here's a driver driving a pretty tight line but missing the apex and sliding on the exit and parking it really bad. And so you're forced to check up and try to do things not to hit him. Thought I might have a try to get on the inside there, but it ain't going to work. So kind of stuck here. Now again into the back straight. Oh, they were kind of quick. Alright. So they're running up here in the sweeper. If you can see their full throttle not modulating at all and mid-track and sliding on the exit. And they're really light so they get they can just race off on the straights. So here again very tight like you want to have your, your left wheel left inside wheel here so these guys are way tight and leaning in so they, their center of gravity is going to be pushing down uh, outwards so they're going to slide here it comes so they're sliding already and parking it right there which is great for me because I'll run around them but I cannot beat them to this turn they're going to beat me there and they're going to go for it so I get the cart over here on the way wide create this huge gap because they're going to be so slow as I get out of this turn and we turn down um, it's, a it's a classic crossover and we aim to get inside right as this car parks so a, you can see it's a big timing thing now I've got momentum, he has none and we basically have him another look so there's the big slide and we're going to try and get underneath that now one way we can approach this is we can stay to the outside and we can pinch him down to the apex and, and force him just we I mean we want him down in this area but instead because he's going there anyway we're going to put our wheel left wheel over here now we're looking at him see where he's going to go and we're trying to time this Now this guy parks it on the exit, which is normally a, a deal killer. As soon as they park it there, bam, and they if they don't leave, leave enough room in this gap, you're, you're, you're screwed. But this guy keeps rotating his back and opened it up, so we just drive down the inside, <coughs> using our momentum to get a run. <coughs> 